A lot of people think about natural materials and specifically bamboo, especially in areas where it grows, as something that is really from the past. I really want to talk about why bamboo is such an important material for us to use in the 21st century. It's really about making a future that we all want to live in. Now, when we think about modern architecture, we don't necessarily think about the beautiful, creative, curvilinear shapes that you might have seen as being iconic bamboo structures. It's important to recognize that we're building those beautiful buildings and those shapes, not just to elevate bamboo as a design material, but also to help people understand how to design for the bamboo. Most buildings are made out of concrete and steel, maybe some aluminum, maybe some glass, um, maybe some wood, um, but concrete and steel have really become the building blocks of our built environment in general. Now the problem with these materials isn't about um, just exclusively that we, you know, that they're unsustainable or that they are uh, materials that we can't necessarily um, rely on to solve problems like climate change um, and uh, resource depletion. Uh, they also really limit us or constrain us to create very simple, um, you know, efficient boxes or caves that we have to live in, right? So when we start looking at new materials, we also look at new ways of designing and we look at taking constraints that natural materials have and turning those, those constraints into opportunities to build better spaces and to create better designs. So it's really important when you think about sustainability, when you think about green building, when you think about architecture that's going to be the driving force to create environments that we want to live in now, it's not just about solving these issues like climate change and you know overdevelopment and all these things that and those things are all really important and bamboo can really help with that too and at bamboo U, we teach everybody a whole lot about you know how do we really take bamboo and understand its full potential but it's not just about solving those sustainability issues it's also about pushing us to be better designers and to take constraints and turning those constraints into opportunities by learning how to focus on creating designs that maximize the capacity of any given material. And bamboo is really a great place to start with this kind of thing because it has such a unique character. It really forces designers to look at how they design in a new way and from a new perspective. When I discovered bamboo 10 years ago, when I came to meet John Hardy here, and I discovered a completely new world for me as an engineer, but more importantly for the world itself and um, the issue we have of climate change. And we have been as an engineering practice working with and developing the use of bamboo from the tropics where it grows into kind of Western construction techniques, because I genuinely believe that within my lifetime, bamboo in a number of different forms, its natural form and its engineered form, will be another of the normal palette of materials that will be used in the construction industry. I think as the world population is predicted to reach the 10 billion mark by the end of this century, um, as architects, we don't have a choice but to think differently. I think the 20th century uh, mentality is no longer applicable in the 21st century reality that we are facing. And if you think about the 10 billion, billion people will all have basic human rights, access to clean air, to clean water, and to education and decent living conditions. And, and the current way of thinking about this, of building mega cities out of concrete and steel and glass, is not going to be sustainable in the long run. The reality is, is that the greatest part of the world that we live in is still pouring concrete at a rate that is uh, unbelievable and there is no holding back that desire because as I said the population is growing and the mindset is still stuck in a sort of mid 20th century um, frame 
that thinks that the only way forward is to build out of steel and concrete in great mass. And I think once we learn to think differently about it, and the, 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 the first step in solving is a problem is to realize that there is a problem in the first place. And this is where I think places like the Green School and Bamboo U are really, really keen. Is it's all down to education because it's not down to goodwill. Uh, it's not down to just money or effort. It's down to education and people to understand that something has to change. And that's the basis of all change. Yeah, John Hardy said, you put a child in a square room, you get a child with a square mind, right? What he's done through the Green School in achieving this rather beautiful school, open, no walls, no doors, both physically open and metaphorically open. It's a kind of broad attitude and a connection back to nature. And I think that's a fundamental connection. I worked with bamboo for 10 years. And that world, the people who work in bamboo, it's a very generous world. It's a surprisingly happy world in, in terms of kind of the way people are involved in bamboo and the way they see the construction of it, not only in its natural form, but in its engineered forms. Digital design has been a very new thing. We started working with parametric design and parametric is not really a style. It's actually an approach to get and understand how we can start designing forms and shapes. All new digital technologies allow us to understand in a better way the projects that we are designing. For example, with digital tools and parametric design, we can actually extract all the information and measurements precisely from that 3D model and take those information and those numbers to the construction site. Also, we can start playing with all the constraints and all the parameters to define the diameters of a ring for a tower. We can play with the diameters of the bamboo that we are going to be using. And even we can play with the amount of bamboo poles needed for one project. So all of this information and all of these tools inside a 3D model uh, software, we can actually have the visualization and the rendering images of what we are precisely going to do. And actually, we can take and extract that 3D model using hollow lenses and see the project itself in the real life. For me, it's all about redefining waste to resource uh, one chopstick at a time. Uh, I think we often underestimate how much potential we have for design and engineering of the resources we have right in front of us. Um, often underutilized or completely neglected, but already part of our stream in, in consumerism. And I took this uh, as, a, as an opportunity uh, to value engineer them into new products. Um, it's not just about the material innovation, it's also about uh, the responsibility for um, the natural resources that we can protect or sustain um, and simply do better. Um, the way we manufacture is also really important in my opinion. It's, it shouldn't uh, be shipped all around the world, both on the resource side and the end product side. I think it can be done in a very efficient uh, way in, in micro factories. And micro factories is um, uh, to me, the future of localizing, problem solving, localizing design and, and market needs, um, urban harvesting resources, producing them into a new material and then turning that material into products we need locally is to me uh, the future of localizing globalization. Well, where, where we came from as a studio was really designing what bamboo wanted to be and what it could be in our imaginations combined with local craftsmanship resources, which were extraordinary um, and adaptable. So we were very quickly able to bring some techniques, for example, that Jörg Stamm brought with him to Bali from South America and to mix them in with like skilled carpenters' hands and from that, we realized kind of this whole new world of how to build and work with bamboo and how to design for it. But that was a very particular thing that resulted from those people at that time in these places with these goals. And it's not really indicative of what 
the bigger future of possibility is with this material or what it should be. As we take bamboo into the future, I can imagine, I can recognize that I can't imagine the range of possibilities of styles and structural systems and techniques that we will develop. Already we're seeing that so much is possible, for example, in glue lamb. Um, by slicing up the bamboo, we unleash its flexible possibilities and we can create curved beams and um, amazing structural strength that has two opportunities. One is quite straightforward. We can slot it in with the way that timber is going, that glue lamb timber is going, and work with it in that way. And that has a great possibility because of the sense of scale, the scalability of it doesn't require craftsmanship. Um, it can already rely on developed technologies, uh, can, be, can be made very efficiently, and that can move quickly. But what I'm more interested in is how we can adapt that way of thinking, of using splits glued together, to create what bamboo can really do in that more mechanized way, in that more modular way, and how that can add to the construction conversation not just be a substitute for wood in that conversation. And so I'm really exciting, excited to see where that will lead. Uh, a friend of mine said to me a little while ago, something that I, I feel very strongly about. He said, he quoted something that said, someone said to him, well, but what can I do? I am but one person, said 8 billion people. The thing is, it's fine, we all sit there, but I mean, ultimately, we've all got a raised point about the leak in the boat is absolutely right. We are all a billion of us. We are all, that leak is affecting all of us ultimately, and it's all of us have to react and do something about it.